Global Health and Humanitarian Relief Organization Project Hope has condemned the killing of those seven World Central Kitchen aid workers in Gaza. Chris Kopech is the executive vice president at that NGO. He joins me now. Um, Chris, we know that uh, U.S. President Joe Biden did condemn the killing of those World Central Kitchen workers, but it does not appear that U.S. Uh, the U.S. stance will, will change on Israel. You have also lost a colleague in Gaza. So if you can, tell us more about that and, and what you hope happens out of all of this. Well, it's become the most dangerous place in the world to provide humanitarian aid, while at the same time being a place in the world that needs it the most. We're facing famine. We have a huge number of people displaced from their homes. They're not able to flee Gaza Strip, so there's no place to go for safety. And it's getting more and more difficult for us to deliver on our mission to provide basic humanitarian assistance to the affected populations. In Gaza, Project Hope has helped with thousands of health consultations, emergency medical and mental health care in Gaza, uh, which I read all about you guys. And we know that a record number of aid workers, as you mentioned, have been killed or injured since October. Your organization has suspended operations for three days, as well as many others, in solidarity with World Central Kitchen. Are you rethinking your level of action longer term? Well, we're thinking in the immediate term right now, uh, how we can get back to work in a way that we feel uh, does not put our staff, our frontline healthcare workers at undue risk. The fact that the World Central Kitchen vehicles were part of a uh, deconfliction zone uh, their information was shared with IDF, and they were still targeted and still hit. Uh, puts our colleagues uh, really a, a great deal of fear for them, because we put our same clinics in the same deconfliction uh, designation to ensure their safety, uh, yet we have to reassess just how safe that makes them. Uh, that being said, you know, uh, Israel says that it is conducting uh, a very deep investigation into that attack. What more do you think needs to be done on their end to ensure the safety of humanitarian workers? Well, we, we've got to see the evidence uh, of this. I mean, we need to know uh, what happened, why it happened, and how it happened. And we need to hear from them what they're going to do to protect us, the international community, uh, the humanitarian community, those, uh, the Gazans who are working every day to provide for their people. Uh, how are they protecting us? What are they going to do to ensure our safety? Because we're not feeling it right now. We're not seeing it. Uh, and our staff are, are scared, and rightfully so. Experts say that famine in Gaza is imminent. What is happening right now behind the scenes? Um, are aid organizations, are you all discussing next steps, coordinating how to move forward? What's happening amongst that community? Well, there's a lot of dialogue between us. We, we talk every day. It's a tight-knit group. Uh, there are different, uh, con you know, opinions within us uh, in terms of, what to do. Some are saying that we need to be suspending operations until there's a full ceasefire. Uh, put additional pressure uh, on the IDF to, to allow for a ceasefire and allow for full access to humanitarian assistance. Uh, others recognize that that could still be a long way out, and, and we don't want to punish the Palestinian people uh, for the actions of the IDF. Uh, they, they are most of the affected populations here are civilians. Two thirds of every person killed in Gaza is a non combatant civilian. Uh, and it is our duty and our obligation and mission, in fact, to provide uh, basic medical and humanitarian assistance to them. Chris, is there anything else that you would like people to know um, what people should know about what's happening right now? I mean, I'm sure you're in such a tough situation dealing with the loss of so many aid workers, your organization, many others, and the frustration at, of not being able to continue doing what you need to do. Well, we understand the depth of the divisiveness that this conflict uh, creates around the world. Everyone understands the two sides and the politics behind it. But the fact remains that international humanitarian law exists for a reason. It's there to protect civilians in combat. It is the same in Gaza as it is in every conflict around the world. And right now, it's not being respected. Most of the impacted individuals and people in Gaza uh, would have fled to safety if they could, and they simply can't. And we need to be there to protect them. There is a duty and obligation of the international community and uh, the, the empowered force, which is the IDF, to provide protection and safety for that population. And, and I think that's something that gets overlooked in the politics of, of the situation.
Chris Skopek of Project Hope. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for sharing uh, your time and your thoughts with us. Thanks for having me.